So we're looking at um, chess lessons, solving problems, and avoiding mistakes by Toretsky. Welcome, Semtosh. And uh, this is a really hard book, especially because the chessable timer is very fast for these positions. So I'm mostly hoping to just like understand the answers, make some good guesses, not too much pressure to get it all right. very difficult because if I ever move the knight this is mate. My only nice thing is that I'm up a piece so if they play g5 I can maybe escape somehow. <coughs> it's hard to play a move though. This makes sense. I was thinking this initially. But g5 is still happening. doesn't seem to solve anything. I think we should just give the piece back. Maybe now, bishop d8. So that if they take, I can play rook e4. But b4 is also kind of a thing here, I think. I don't know why anyone would ever click the I don't know button down here at the bottom. Like at least just guess something. I'm thinking about rookie three. Or maybe I should sack um, my bishop just to get my pieces out. But then I might be two pieces down at the end. Take, 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 take. I think this is it. It is a trade queens, and then I can actually move my knight. Pick the best move at a winning position. This is probably one that has alternative moves and stuff.
Balinsico, welcome. <clears throat> I'm glad that you're here. I'm also glad that um, I spotted that Queen D3 is important, even though I got this puzzle wrong. In this book, it's like destiny to get everything wrong. It's a very hard book for me. Um, I was thinking Queen H4 with the idea of capturing here. And when they capture back to play um, bishop takes e5. Or bishop takes f6 and it depends. Like I go here, they play like, I don't know. If they put this rook on like e2, for example, I can already win a piece. So it looked kind of enticing. I'm kind of curious about uh, why it wasn't mentioned. There's, usually when Tversky doesn't mention some kind of obvious move, it's because it's clearly bad. Um, so it's funny when I don't see why it's clearly bad. Yeah, this is a very tough book. Um, I like it a lot, though. It's just a collection of like little tiny lessons by um, Tvoretsky. I think I don't know if this was published when he was alive or not, but it's you know it's his content. He used to maintain a blog back when blogs were a thing, or I forget it was like Chess Cafe was a website. This was all before I learned how to play chess, so I've only heard about it. But, you know, they used to put out chess content on various websites. And, um... Bradsky was one of the people who put out a lot of that content. So this is probably all stuff scraped from his chess cafe posts. If I had to guess. One second, guys. So what else was interesting about this? So this move is sort of a no-brainer. This is a move that's harder to find. I thought about it, but I didn't like that after rook takes g6, nothing's really going on. But then, and for that reason, I tried to prepare it with um, queen d3. I don't think it really works. For example, um, rook e7, rook takes g6. Pawn takes g6, queen takes g6, rook g7. I didn't see that because the time was running low, but I see it now. Um, but I did see that queen d3 is the follow-up here. Here they have to give up two pawns for a piece, and then since they're losing an exchange on top of that, that's, that's pretty nice. Like here, I could at least take on e5 at some point. I think they're going to lose an exchange. Interesting position. This bishop on b7 is not a player for some time. How many Tvoretsky courses do I have? I think this is my only... or I, I think I have two Tvoretsky books on Chessable. And Santosh, yes, you can get this book on Chessable if you want. Uh, let me send you a direct link, hold on, so that it's easy for you. By the way, if you guys want, you can follow me on Chessable. Um, let me switch to see this ugly stuff not that I'm much better looking but you know um, at least I'm formatted properly so um, I'm opening up the book page I'm putting it in the chat everybody can have that now so if you're on chessable that's the book and if you guys want to follow me um, this is my profile but political I I started reading Tourette's books before Chessable was a thing. So um, I've, I've also gone through Tourette's Endgame Manual back when that was like just one book, not several books on Chessable. You know, one big book in real life. That was one of the first books that I worked um, really hard on reading and learning from. <clears throat> I got a lot of mileage out of it too. All right, so now we're wondering how Petrosian should have defended this position. I don't know what 5th edition is like compared to any other editions. Seriously. Um, I'm about to run out of time. I'm going to just play a move. Ugh, knight g4 is a move that just looks so obvious to play.
I was trying to make room to run because, like, in a pinch, I just don't know what to do. But if I can play, like, knight g4, queen h3, h5, maybe that's playable. It looks really dangerous, though. Like, the whole the whole shebang. So here I was expecting to play h5. I don't think I can go back to f6, so that's probably the only move. But if I play h5 and they take on g6, I can't take back. I probably have to play, like, f5 or something. But even that looks ridiculous. Knight f6 might just be it. Like, just sack an exchange and... Or something. I think I have to go back. Yeah. That's a weird repetition. And the idea that I had is also given in the line here that if they play something like rook g3, I'm going to just defend on g6. If I can get king g7 in, probably the attack is not as strong. <coughs> uh, what's the first chapter of Blitzer called? Is it just the introduction of the book? tempting to just like take something here but I'm not sure how to really finish off the game bishop g4 rook h6 bishop e6 king f8 rook g8 king e7 and then what rook g7 I think that's it don't have time to think about two things here. All right, so it's given as a line at least. That's always a good sign. Really, after c5, this is wrong. This looks pretty good. Like I'm taking other stuff. Dretzky comments that White's extra pawn in the endgame is too modest an achievement for this splendid position, which makes sense to me. It's also very hard to win positions like this one against an engine. So I know we don't play against engines very much, but I think it's still a pretty good indicator of like what kind of positions we should really aim for. Like, is a position salvageable? I would choose it over one that is not salvageable. Um, but the line that he gives that's better for black is actually queen takes c5. And then bishop takes e6 as an in-between move. And he says his rook endgame is clearly worse for white, and I agree. Pass pawn, active king. Okay, so I messed up. It's better to just come over here. I think I can play d6, rook d4, pawn takes, rook takes, takes on d8, rook takes, and then bishop g4. So if I play d6 and they play a move, like some random move, like queen b7, maybe I play. Hmm. I think I'm probably fine with trading queens and getting double pawns here. Kasparov gave h3 plus minus. And uh, Roman Nishin was worried about this move. But looks like white's winning anyway. Opposite color bishops and white has the initiative. I don't think rook f2 really leads to anything. Like queen h6 probably is the move. 
but it says that here bishop takes, bishop takes, and d6 is waiting for white, which was kind of my idea. I'm more curious about what happens after queen b7. I was planning to play this move. Oof. And then, I guess, queen d5. Blitzicle says he's been trying to grind his blitz rating. I don't know why you guys are always trying to grind something. Like, why grind? Why are you grinding? Like, don't worry about rating. Just enjoy learning. Everything's going to be fine. Drink some water. Feel the grass. It's a really nice position. I don't know what to do with it. Queen c6 looks pretty reasonable, but I, I don't know. I think I like the queen on d5 too. Maybe b4, just try to render these bishops irrelevant by playing c5. So the idea here is queen a8. I thought about queen a8. I figured queen d7 was holding everything, but rook f7 would change that, so this makes a lot of sense. white to play and win situation here. I imagine it's like rook c3, rook e7, king f1. <clears throat> Idea is like king d5, king e2, I'm going to win this pawn. Um, and you can't really maintain the king anywhere near that pawn. For example, um, king d4, rook d3, king c4, rook e3, I guess. And they can't even trade rooks and take on b4. So I think it's this. Rook c3 is not even mentioned. It says rook c2. Oh, I know why. See, usually if it's not mentioned, it's an obvious blunder. If, if rook c3, they're not playing rook e7. They're playing e2. And if rook e3, then rook f1 and you lose the rook that's kind of dumb i make a lot of blunders um when i don't have a lot of time so it's good to do these positions practice more of that fast decision making yeah i think it's not good to do too many courses at a time you know just a few is good like a little bit of everything all at once but not like too much of everything all at once. Um, Endgame Strategy by Mikhail Sharevsky. I don't think so. I don't think I've read it. I haven't read a ton of chess books, honestly. Uh, but I think of the ones that I've read, almost all of them are probably good chess books, which is hard to accomplish. Um, right, Rook C1. We gotta do this. I think I can just take that. I'm doing fine. Yeah, I think I have to take it and get behind my pawn, which we always do. And this is a winning position. This is probably the most important takeaway here. Like, guessing the moves is easy, but like knowing that this is winning is very important, I would say. 
of the books on chess that I've read, I think a lot of them are endgame books. Um, I read Ruben Fine's Basic Chess Endings, which is not that great, but you know, I read it. It was one of the first books I read. Um, I read Dvorsky's Endgame Manual, which is always good, but it's more like a textbook. I read 100 Endgames You Must Know. Um, I read some book by Chernev about um, it's like 100 Brilliant Endgames or something like that. It's really just a puzzle book. Um, I've read several books that have components about the endgame, like uh, Learn from the Legends by Marin is an endgame book. I read that one. So I've kind of like read so much about endgames. But there's always more work to do. All right, so black has to save this endgame. So this is probably like a worst case scenario for white compared to the last diagram. I imagine we would want to exchange our H pawn for their G pawn. <clears throat> I'm not sure how that might be accomplished though. But their rook is stuck kind of on this on this line, so that's kind of useful. Maybe start with just cutting off the king. Now here I might want to try like h5, h4, pawn takes h4, and rook h3. That seems quite reasonable. But they'll probably try to head it off by h5, king g2. But h4, hmm, yeah, h4, pawn takes, and I can't play rook h3, so king g2 is a good move. But maybe after h5, I can just wait. Mm, doubtful. Probably now is the time for waiting, because if I play h5, king g2, and then rook c3, then they might be able to start trying on the other side of the board, like rook a5. h4, pawn takes h4, um, rook c7, h5, something like this, I don't know. I'll try this. No. Rook c3 was the waiting move, just like I was saying. Just got a little freaked out by the lack of time. Alright, now we run over to the corner. So the trick here, I guess, if I try this immediately, then the king gets active. I can shoulder my king. King d4 is shouldering. That's a good idea. And here, rook c3, because h5 doesn't work for the reason that I said right before I played h5. Now with the king on g2, they're not able to play king e3 and king d4 with shouldering. So we stole a move here before going to collect this pawn. Which I didn't think of doing at all. So this is a nice, nice little thing here. Well, good luck trying to get to 1900 by the end of the summer, Bellitzical. Um even if you don't manage, I hope you learn a lot of stuff so that it doesn't matter and you'll eventually get there anyway. All right, so e5's coming up in this position. We could play bishop g4. That's kind of a way to deal with it, as far as I can tell. Or maybe we want to play rook d8, e5, c5, pawn takes f6, pawn takes. I don't know, seems kind of weak. Maybe this. Okay, c5 right away makes sense. I was kind of hoping for more, but getting this tempo is good. And we'll have a worse structure, but it's okay. We 
we're surviving. More opposite color bishops shenanigans. It looks really bad though. Almost all the examples in this book, it's like Turetsky gives you a position that looks untenable and then something interesting happens and the position is playable. So I think it's really good to be able to internalize these positions at some point. This is my second go through in this book, so I'm not like at that point where I get everything for sure. I've seen all these positions once and I kind of just looked at them once in a while when I'm like lying in bed or something, so not like a systematic deal. Here it looks like it should be something like rook f6. Maybe. But then pawn takes g5, what's happening? I don't think it's this, but there's no time. Okay, it was rook f4. Stepping into a double attack willfully because we are attacking e4 at the same time. Yeah, a lot of, I want to get to a point where I don't really suggest moves that Dreski doesn't even mention because those moves are almost always really bad moves. <coughs> Rook f6 looks totally normal and good here. I don't see why not, yeah. Okay, now if I play queen g5, there's queen g7. That might not be great, but there... I do have knight takes e6, I think. So queen g5, queen g7, knight e6. Do they have to play either rook or pawn takes? Um, if they play pawn takes, I play rook g6, so they have to play rook takes. I don't know if I really want to play this rook end game. I don't think it's that much better. So maybe just build up like rook f1. Then they can play queen g7 anyway. There's, there's probably something good here. So let's just have faith in chess here. I have very little faith when I'm playing a chess game. I want to see it. I want to get it. I usually don't play too much on schematic thinking. And that's something that I want to improve on. Queen c7 looks like a step in the wrong direction because they can play rook c8, queen b7, and maybe something like rook c5. But it is a lot of pawns to go down. <clears throat> I don't see something more reasonable at the moment. Okay, still good, but now c7 is guarded. But g6 is not safe anymore, so maybe queen e4. Yeah, this makes sense. So I had the idea to play rook g6 earlier, but wasn't that consistent chasing it down. Stana Bucks, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Stano Bucks, do you ever want to play a, a match against one of the viewers in my channel with, with commentary from me at some point? I've been doing this um, fan battle, fan face-off series, and um, I've got somebody whose rating's like 2100 or something who wants to 
have a battle with someone within like 150 points of them. Well, if you want more information, hit me up on the Discord. Yeah, Blood's Eagle thinks it's great. I, I know a lot of people watch it live. Um, and we do some like post-mortem afterwards. Um, I've been I've been all right. Um, life's a small disaster, but I'm still playing chess, so it can't be that bad, right? You know, we always have some chess going on. All right, so Queen D8, refuted move, according to um, Dvoretsky. I think Rook F6 is probably still good. Uh, but I guess Queen D5 is probably the point. But then rook takes e6 is winning a piece. So maybe not queen d5. I don't know. Rook f6 looks pretty good. If king f8, queen g5. If they're playing king e7, they're they're getting roasted with rook takes e6. So honestly, hard to suggest a move, and the and the clock is ticking. So there it is. Hold on. It says this is unconvincing. But I thought rook takes e6 is winning a piece. Pawn takes. Queen f6. This is not winning. Alright, so here they just sack back. And it's a rook end game. And as you know, all rook end games are drawn. So. I guess that makes sense. I didn't see that it's going to work on game. I saw it's like kind of big attack. It looks nice, but they can sack an exchange. <clears throat> so queen g3 it is. Um, 96 looks totally normal here. But refuted is, you know, strong language. So I'm kind of looking for something more spectacular, something good. I don't think there's really anything here except 96. So, and here it's probably not exchanging rooks. Maybe it's like rook ef1, and maybe rook f6 at that point. Something like that. Okay, so it is rook takes. Here I wasn't sure about the follow up. Could be that we just all jump on this e6 pawn. Maybe so. I've seen checks before. I don't see no ghosts. Um, do I want to do this? Or do I want to stay where I am? I kind of like having the rook active. I don't think this check gives them any new possibilities. Queen f6 still looks good here. <clears throat> yeah, it's a normal sequence. Samuel, welcome. Um, right now I'm just working on this book, so I won't play a match right this second, but um, I do want to let you know that I do commentated uh, fan battles where people who are um, viewers will face against each other and I'll give commentary on their games and then we talk about the games at the end. So if you're interested in that, um, just let me know what your light chess rating is and I can try to get you in touch with somebody. Um, I also can invite you to my Discord. So if you want to get in touch with someone to fight against, uh, we can do that too. All right, here's the Discord link if you want to drop in. Welcome, Meter Master. Um, I do the matches pretty much whenever people uh, can agree on a, a time to to duke it out, really. 
I haven't done one in a little while just because things have been hectic, but we have one coming up this Saturday. So if you guys want to just see how the how the fan battles are, you can you know just tune in on Saturday. It's already scheduled on YouTube, so you guys can check that out if you want to you know set a reminder for yourself or something. And I'll be streaming it on YouTube and Twitch. Okay, so we go forward with this book. Um, yeah, it's tricky to avoid going to a rook endgame for that example. Yeah, you got it, Stana Bucks. How's the Planet Chess Club doing? Still planetary? All right, so Queen Beware. It's hard to assess these positions so quickly. But you know what? That's that's what we got to do. Maybe here it's good to throw h3 just like not get get checked at all. So it was an alternative move. That's interesting. Maybe h4. <laughs> okay, he's he gives h3 as the the superior move in his notes. But it's only an alternative, sad. Um, gives this as the main line. Apparently a5 is an outstanding move. It gives it a double x clam. I mean, I'm looking at it and I still don't see why it's a double x clam move, but... I'm sure it'll all become obvious at some point, but even this is is good. And taking on g4 was my idea, so I still feel pretty satisfied with that. All right, so queen g5 was given a, also an exclamation point. Knight takes e6 comes with check, so that's probably um, the big detail here. Except knight takes e6 is illegal, so. So maybe a5 here, but then queen b1 is check. Maybe here I could still play h3. Or maybe play rook c5. <laughs> but rook c5 looks crazy. That must mean that like knight takes e6 is really good if I can actually play that. So I think h3 is my my move right now. This to me looks like making a space for the king on g3. I mean, I guess I'll take back. Can I take that? Queen d4, rook back to e3. <coughs> d5 might even be playable. Now d5, bishop d7, rook e8, bishop e8 doesn't look so actually then queen e7 king g7 queen e8 c2 yeah i'm not sure i can play d5 here i think i should take on c3 Yeah, a5 is a good idea, but it's not an obvious idea, I would say. Like here it's giving queen d4, queen h6, and rook takes e6. Which, like when you see this now, it's it's kind of winning, because there's not a pawn on c2. But I think that if you play um, d5, like a similar idea, let me switch to the analysis board mode for you. Here, um, 
if you play d5, I was pretty confident that c2 is, is winning. Um, if not, this move first. Here I saw queen e5 check. And then this is promoting. Oh, but rook e1 guards the promotion square. So this is not winning. But I think I think that um, probably just c2 straight up foregoes all the formalities. Yeah, the engine is saying that it's winning for black as well. Like, if you take, I make a queen. If you throw a check, I just move. It's suggesting this check, but like I don't think it really matters. All the checks are gonna run out, you know, like that. Sag position where they can't take on C two or anything. All right, we're switching back. Um, I actually blundered and lost in that game that you're mentioning. Um, my position was really good. I'm not like 2200 over the board. I haven't, I haven't really been playing. Like I didn't play from like the beginning of the COVID lockdown until pretty recently. I think I've played like five events, but, um, I'm doing, I'm doing pretty well in general chess wise. I think it'll be better when I can afford to play more often. I think um, I'm going to be playing in Reykjavik if I can get the money together. That'll probably be really good. I expect to have a good performance. <laughs> yes, Danabox. I, I know. Um, I haven't seen you anywhere since like 2017 or something. But I guess you're on the streaming grind, right? It's not. I don't know if it's necessarily that beneficial for you to play outside of it just being a good thing to do. I also know you were moving, and I moved too. Like, this kind of stuff is pretty distracting and difficult sometimes. Yeah, life's hella expensive at the moment. I mean, it, it was before, and now it's just even more so. Yeah, I'm still in the boot. I'm out here. What is even going on here? says this is the only move that leads to the goal. Queen h5 runs into queen f6, so we do this one. So let's say we give that check. I don't know, I'm looking at something like this. But then they have like any move. Maybe queen h8, queen g8, and then queen f6. Something like this. It's an alternative. Maybe I throw one rook first. Or rook g5. Rook g5 looks very reasonable. But then there's queen b1. And then rook... Yeah. Hmm. Might still be winning. Rook g5, queen b1, king f2, queen b2, king g3. No, rook e3 is check. That doesn't look good. Well, I can play this to get more time, because <laughs> I know it's an alternative move. Rook g5 doesn't seem like it's working. All right, take care, Blitzical. If you play queen h4, if you play queen h5, there's queen f6 defending, so that's that's why it's not that. Um, hmm. Oh, you know what? I don't have to play king g3. I could play knight e2. Maybe it is rook g5, queen b1, king f2, queen b2, knight e2. Rook e3, and then king h, queen h8. 
King e7. I don't know, I'm still not seeing it. Get a little more time here. I think after a certain number of alternative moves, it's going to tell me to buzz off. Rook g5, queen b1, king f2, queen b2, knight e2, rook e3. Well, that position looks very reasonable anyway. Like, it's probably not necessary that I should finish the game on the spot. All right, I'm going to try it. Knight f5 makes sense, but they can take a bunch of stuff here. Can they not? So if they take on f5, I have queen h8, and that wins. If they take on e5 first, I have queen h8, and that wins. Okay, I actually missed both of the... Well, one of those ideas. Queen h8 is winning in both cases. All right, that's nice. Yes, Dana Bucks, I am still in the boot, and I think I will be at least in this area for quite a long time because, I don't know, it's... I might be getting a job down here. Some kind of fancy science stuff. Um, the upshot of that will be that I will probably be able to play chess a lot more if it if it works out, but it's still like years in the making. So much energy spent just to like pull together a good chess playing situation. White has one way to develop the initiative, according to Mr. Dvoretsky. It is, of course, to play an illegal move, knight of five. I'm thinking maybe king h2, because this position looks a little bit, you know, tranquilo. Right, it was rook e3, which provokes rook f8, which honestly looks fine. Well, maybe now I can play knight f5. All oh, right, I already saw this variation. I just didn't remember. This was in the notes earlier, I think. Well, no, it's actually a similar position, not the same. Queen e5 forces f6 or rook g7. Maybe I should just pile up on e on f7 now. Like, mm, no, it's not very convincing. I have no idea. Um, something about attacking weaknesses. All right. So this neutralizes g3, just like rook g3 does. Prevents queen c1. I didn't even think about queen c1. And it's... The, the idea that the knight should go from d4 to e2 to g3 and then to f5 instead of straight to f5 is kind of irritating here. Um, but it's just the possibility of it. Right now it's, it's not possible. So 
but it seems more important that it could go on h5. But I didn't think of it would. Um, it's that easy to find a good place for this rook that's not h5, because I kind of want to keep this pressure. I'm not really confident that I want to trade this rook. I do want to keep control of f5. These are like super difficult problems. And they definitely aren't unique solutions, but I don't think I'm really giving alternative moves. According to the commentary, this is that one time when Van Whaley was brilliant. Just kidding. I'm always roasting Luke Van Whaley because he's lost to every good player ever. If I play rook d4, that temporarily forestalls rook g4. I think I have to play super actively here to not lose. Maybe like fortress stuff, like rook and bishop against queen would be good. Let me try this. Nope, we uh, we just hang all our pieces. This is this is how you play chess. How could I possibly miss this move? Or even better, oh, I totally saw that. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, I just thought my move was better. Yeah, bishop f5, what is that? Well, now that the rook's not on g3, maybe I can just, you know, we can all hold hands and sing Kumbaya. No? No? Okay. I'm gonna lose my rook. Hmm. Well, I don't see any reason to go on g7. I think king g8 is also just as good. So this is probably one situation where I actually disagree with them. Yeah, bishop doesn't rhyme with knife, for sure. Otherwise, it would have been easy to find the move. Bifniff f5. See, if, if I kind of say it like that, this move makes sense. Just kind of try to screw it in there on f5. Just pretend it's a knight. It makes it feel better. Okay. Ridiculous move. Bishop f5. See that again? Slow motion. Um, and I forgot that I should probably... Well, not forgot, but I just didn't think that I should trade this rook right away. I thought I could go back to e6. Let's say I play this move. Hold on, let's let's do a little little mess around here. This whole scene is for the mess around scene. Um, if I play this move. Oh yeah, this rook is actually really important. Um, because I lose. Okay, maybe it's Already bedtime for me. Yep, I think bedtime is happening because that's like easy mate. And I'm just missing it. So I gotta take this. And if they take this, then I can tuck this bad boy away. Put it to bed. Alright. Let's keep going a little bit. Wait, how long have I been streaming? How long have I been sitting here? Where am I? Oh, it's been an hour. Okay, that's good.
how should black continue here? What a great question, Dvoretsky. Never heard that one before. I guess you want to play e5. Then I can play d5, and that's probably not so bad. But then they can get their f5 in, maybe, one day. I kind of want to play f5 myself, just to be like, you know what, I can do that too. Oh, I forgot that there was time. <laughs> Jeez. I got... I got really interested in thinking about the position there for a second. Um, Queen e8 is probably the good one. I could, I could take this and play that. Let's see, there, I'm fast to make up for it now. White has tried to keep his bishop. Yes, it's time for punishment. Not that one. Come on, I want to play knight a3. You know, what, I'll do it again. Alright, it's very insistent. We play d5 first. And maybe now we can play this one. And the really important point here is that I can play bishop f6, I think. No, because they can block on d4 like 5,000 times. So... didn't work. Okay, so the important detail here is that they can't play bishop takes a3 in this position. So that's why it was d5 first. Silly me. I thought I could play d5 after that. But it makes sense to play d5 when white is less flexible. You know, in the first place they're not up a piece. So they kind of have to take on d5 there. Um, and this also opens the c5 so we get access to c2 and c3 and stuff. I can I can deal with this. This gross failure. Um, I think if they try to defend c2, I can play bishop b4 and bishop c3. Something like that. Or maybe even queen b7. Just straight up tell them they got problems. This looks like a situation for for one of these. Oh man, f6 is apparently not very good. Sag. Now I really want to sacrifice something. Like knight g5, what if they take here? Maybe I'll play h5. But then they could take on f5, so I should probably take, take, and play h5. Or that very reasonable move. They have to second exchange if I do this one. And yeah, this is winning. So g6 is a good move. I think only the first move is really tricky for this one. Because f6 looks very natural as well. I guess it's not often the case that, well, at least not in my games, that there's a knight on f3 when you're doing this whole kingside shebang. So it's good to make some space for it. I think after f6, I probably will play bishop f8. That's probably a puzzle. Because, oh no, here they, they definitely play bishop f8. Pawn takes, bishop takes. Now it's white to play in this strange position.
obviously I should take this rook, you know, because it's a free rook. And you get swiftly checkmated. Maybe, uh, maybe two can play this game. Oh man, I wanted to play this so that I can play knight f6. But this is admittedly problematic. I forgot what the move was. Whoops. Hmm. Was it here? I forget. Oh yeah, it was rook f3. All right, I'm forgetting stuff. This is probably the end of my end of my. Uh, what's the word for that thing when you uh, when you're working for a while? My shift. That's right. I think I probably have to resign myself to allowing him to open all these files. Sort of like that Hillary Clinton case. Um, it's probably better if I take with a C pawn, so at least I can. Um, not have to worry about rook c2. Yeah, I should probably do that. Okay, of course it's a takes. Queen f1 was kind of on my mind, but I think this runs into similar difficulties. Like, they're going to take here. Like, queen f1, pawn takes b3, rook takes f7, pawn takes c2, Awkward moment when I play king c1, they take this and make a queen, and then win the game. Very sad. Don't do that. Well, maybe here, now that I have um, some capacity for preventing e2. I could try knight g4 memes. They're a little bit slower than they were a second ago. All right, and we we survive. So so Stanibucks was saying bc a b king c1. I believe that ends in mate where they play rook c1, like bringing the king back. So um, what I calculated there was. Oh, let me open the analysis, boy. Analysis away. Okay, so the thing that I calculated here was that they take this, um, and you were saying king c1, is that right? Yeah, king c1. So king c1 is b2, and then probably any move that attacks a1 because we don't have a threat in this position, like maybe queen a7. So yeah, that was tricky. Um, the thing that I looked at, I misunderstood your line initially. The thing that I was thinking about here um, was where the rook is still there. I was thinking like, let's say I play queen f1 and then take here. Take take and then I was thinking that this and oh, I didn't mean to do that I meant to go right here and then this ends in mate so that was the line that I saw that made me not want to really take this rook at all but making these decisions quickly is is hard yeah there's mate everywhere I think no matter how you take that rook mates happening it's just like every black piece is looking right here and then we open the way. It's just not, it's very dangerous. Yeah, it was made before, right, with queen a7 or whatever. Just different problems. We got, we got issues. Okay, maybe a little bit more.
probably I should take all the games from this book and put them in a study. That might be a good idea. Just so I can see them all together. Chessable kind of um, messed things up when they um, changed the order in which the variations are given because a ton of the books were written in a certain order and it flipped that order around completely. So it's always referring to a variation you haven't even seen yet. I think they, I think they blundered in that position. <clears throat> yeah, I didn't see this fast enough. Deepon is eager to advance, according to this this note here. Have you guys ever seen eager pawns? If you haven't, um, this D pawn right here is very eager. You know, it's it's doing eager stuff. Does he give a note for um, Bishop C three? I guess they should just like obviously not take it. It's probably the whole the whole deal. Like they'll just play Queen of Four or something. I don't know. I feel kind of good about getting a bishop on C three. I think I should analyze that real quick after the, after this, and then we can wrap it up. So we go back here. Analyze this. Well, it says rook c3 is good. Bishop c3, queen f4 is plus minus. That is pathetic. Not what I want to hear. I had enough of your negativity, stunk fish. Yeah, even this is apparently better for white even after this counterplay occurs, because they can defend it. <laughs> oh well. Turns out I'm not so good at chess. So I think I will turn in here, and I thank you guys for, for showing up. And if you guys want to join the Discord, either click that link or um, request it by leaving a comment on YouTube. I'm happy to have more people join in, especially for those fan fights, fan battles. Um, the live commentated things are really fun. So feel free to join in. And until next time, um, good luck with your chess. Take care, everyone. Later, Stanabucks.